Hello everybody and welcome to Easy Allies Final Fantasy VII Rebirth interview with director Naoki Hamaguchi. How are we doing today? Yeah, I'm very excited. I'm very excited. Awesome. We are too because we love Final Fantasy and especially VII. Uh, after the you know part one, but here we are with part two. It's been a long wait, but it also seems like it went really fast. Like we're just here already. <laughs> but this one obviously went open world or you know big open environments compared to the uh, you know more intimate uh, Midgar from the first one. Uh, what were the challenges in developing the open-ended environments, but keeping the players focus? So in terms of you know Final Fantasy VII, I think it's very much sort of anticipated from the fans as well um, that this be um, you know still very much sort of a story and like you know in depth worldview um, you know filled type of game uh, is what the fans are expecting. So of course we didn't want to you know like you know overly change that aspect of it. Um, but on top of that, um, I do know that from coming from remake, we had some fans saying you know we uh, we would have liked to have a little bit more sort of freedom um, to the degree of like um, the, our choices and being able to um, decide um, how to play the game. So this is something that we leaned in on for Rebirth um, in that we not only have this like very, um, you know, in-depth and, and cinematic uh, narrative, but on top of that now we have this sort of voluminous, um, you know, side contents and this exploration of the world map in which the, the players are now kind of free to explore um, as they wish. And so for those who really want to, you know, focus more on the main story and um, you know follow their the character's journey on that path um, they're free to do so and then there's also this whole world of um, you know side contests and quests mini games that you can also you know be free to to choose if, if they wish so I think we really reach this um, you know wonderful balance of the two uh, for rebirth yeah there is so much content in this game like how how did you all get so much content in this game in, in a seemingly short amount of time? So actually, sort of regarding sort of the overall game structure, um, this was something that was already, you know, kind of uh, beginning to be thought of at the end of uh, Remake when we were, you know, developing Remake. Um, the sort of structure for Rebirth was um, sort of thought of. And so within the first year of development um, for Rebirth, we had um, kind of already uh, solidified the sort of, you know, rough sort of game gameplay experience um, within the main story, as well as, you know, how uh, wide or you know large the world map will be as well as sort of the overall contents was already kind of determined within the first year of development um, and so it was sort of uh, you know we, we had something to work with already at the time within the dev staff and then from then on um, you know in the later later years um, that was when we were sort of honing in and going deeper into the details and working on these um, and so in that way since we had sort of mapped everything out um, from the get-go um, I felt this really allowed us to work you know very smoothly and efficiently and you know, led to us being able to create something of very, you know, high quality, um, dense, um, and, uh, you know, solid piece of work within this four years of time. How do you decide what to keep similar and where to insert changes to keep players satisfied, but also surprised? So there's kind of two main ways in um, which kind of we took care to do in, in Rebirth um, to kind of keep both the elements of sort of familiarity and, and surprise all the same. And so, you know, the first uh, way is is uh, since we know that this is this beloved game in which there's many fans and people are quite familiar with the story of the original, um, we have been pretty conscious in, in including these elements of like, you know, kind of change or sort of obvious noticeable, you know, difference um, to sort of keep this sort of anticipation of, uh, you know, where uh, this journey is going to go. And this is done so uh, for remake, remake uh, with the presence of the Whispers. And for this title, you know, Zack is, is a very key figure, um, also uh, kind of symbolizing this change. Um, so that's one way. And secondly, you know, seeing that now it's over, you know, 20 years have passed um, since the original has been released. And, you know, now we have the remake series. Um, there's been, you know, 
know, some great technological advances that have been made um, that really now allow us to go just much more deeper um, in like terms of expression. And in that way, I, um, I felt it was also um, kind of a good, great opportunity for us to, um, you know, fully kind of express in details um, what sort of the creators had originally intended that serve as kind of a new discovery and surprise um, for the players playing this remake series now. So um, within the demo, uh, we had that sort of Nibelheim uh, flashback um, where, you know, clouds kind of gestures and expressions and, you know, uh, de subtle details that are, are very much, you know, like to Zach. And uh, that was, you know, of course, something originally intended within the storyline, but now we're, that wasn't, um, you know, now we're able to depict it just much more clearly. Um, so, uh, you know, with that, players just have this, like, new discovery um, and feeling, and uh, and that was something that uh, we felt was uh, necessary for us to do as well. We get some new party members this time around. Uh, were there any challenges or difficulties in developing Red 13 or Kate Sith? Uh, because, you know, they're animals, you know, they're not human. So were there any issues, like, developing their combat style or anything like that? So it was not so much that, you know, it was challenging because they weren't sort of a humanoid or they were non-human uh, characters, but, um, you know, the sort of overall battle system um, was, uh, you know, kind of worked on in, in, in Remake. And at the time, we had already kind of decided on uh, whether character was more of like an attacker or, you know, defender type of, uh, you know, battle. And we, you know, man maintained this sort of balance in that way. So, you know, approaching Rebirth, uh, the conversations I had with the battle director, um, Endo, on was that, you know, like, how can we fit in, like, Red 13 and Kate Sith so that, you know, they're not really overlapping and, you know, it'll feel very fun and unique to play. And uh, so considering, uh, so for Red 13 in Rebirth, um, he kind of has this dual um, aspect of both being an attacker and defender. Um, and for Kate Sith, um, you know, players who know him from the original um, may kind of remember the very strong, like, luck kind of element and, and really fun um, play. And of course, he has this really like cute appearance so we really wanted to make the you know bat and battle and combat system really fun um, for the players too so we have him riding the fat moogle and able to do these like you know uh, specific attacks because um, he's riding um, on the moogle and uh, you know so we kind of toyed around with that um, so definitely kind of figuring those things out was a really like unique and fun new challenge for us and uh, you know going into the the next uh, the uh, title we'll have two more new characters to think of too, so that'll be a whole nother uh, challenge for us. I love the drop kick and the, the rolling the dice. Drop kick to dice roll is fun. It's fun. It's a fun control, like just feeling too. Huh? Yeah. Uh, did you always plan on Red 13 riding a chocobo? So for Red 13, um, the, for the, kind of the, the character settings, um, this was something that, um, you know, the creative, creative director, um, Nomura-san, was overseeing. Um, so we had sort of initially uh, approached them from the dev side saying, oh, you know, we kind of, we want Red 13 to ride a chocobo too. Like, is that going to be okay? And he was, it was like, he was more or less kind of like, yeah. That's cool. Like, let's do it. Um, so, uh, you know, the, on our team, there was someone that was very motivated to work on the uh, Red 13 uh, riding the Chocobo. And so it came to fruition. Um, and of course, you know, Red 13 riding the Chocobo is very cute. But another... Um, him uh, climbing up the cliffs, Red 13, is also really cute. So I hope players will get to see. Queen's Blood is a very big part of Final Fantasy Rebirth. I am obsessed with Queen's Blood. I, I, you know, anytime I have the chance to play Queen's Blood, I take a lot of time and just, you know, theorycraft my deck, and I just got so obsessed with it. Who is in charge of, of developing that or, or balancing that? Is that a separate team of, of you, separate from everything, or just in tangent, like, together with everything? So when we were thinking about, you know, the different types of mini games, um, we definitely wanted something that could be played for sort of long term throughout the game um, as well. And when thinking back at the different sort of mainline titles um, for previous uh, Final Fantasy series uh, titles, we did think of a card game with something that, you know, perhaps fans of the series would have familiarity with. So, um, so you know, from that line of thinking, um, you know, 
we kind of decided on the idea of making this card game uh, for a rebirth. And from there, you know, I looked uh, to the dev team, and there were about like four or five members um, that were extreme card game fans. <laughs> so we sort of like formed this group where we would kind of discuss and um, come up with the rules of, of Queen's Blood, like how it's going to play out. And um, as for sort of like, you know, who was a part of it, um, there was, uh, you know, people who were not only just working on the card game, mini game exclusively, but they would be sort of like battle planners that were also working on the boss battles. Um, so they were kind of doing all of these um, concurrently um, to, to form this. Yeah, so since we have such a large number of mini games um, in Rebirth, right, you can only imagine, um, you know, how, how much that would take. And uh, so it was more so that you know, we don't, it's not so much that we have like one person working on a single mini game, but they would be kind of working uh, with a mini game in tandem with, you know, multiple other tasks. Um, so that was the way we developed it. What was the inspiration for the, you know, riverboat uh, Queen's Blood uh, uh, tournament, basically, you know, I, I, I kept thinking of like the movie Maverick or <laughs> Red Dead Redemption. Uh, was there any inspiration for that or did that just come up naturally? Yeah, so for that, um, you know, you may recall the, Netflix, the very popular Netflix series Queen's Gambit mm -hmm. um, a while back. And that, that definitely served as a, you know, kind of a good, good inspiration. Did you always have the idea for what, uh, for which part of Final Fantasy VII uh, Rebirth would contain? Or did that move or change at all? Um, yes, for as for kind of like which part of the story Rebirth would cover, um, that was uh, definitely determined sort of within the you know beginning stages of development for Rebirth. And when we had this sort of initial draft um, come in from Jima-san, um, you know, I along with others, uh, you know, kind of head of the development, were all kind of aligned um, in that uh, you know where the story uh, would would kind of begin and end would be you know very much the most kind of anticipated and really exciting parts that uh, we wish to have for Rebirth. So we were quite aligned on that. He's not here, but uh, my coworker, Michael Damiani, used to do a show called Game Sleuth, where he would uh, look up, you know, very obscure rumors in, in video games. And he wanted me to ask if you could shed light on the inclusion of Test Zero. Uh, this was originally a Japanese-only glitch, but in Rebirth... Uh, it seems to have taken the circumstances around it and turned it into a full event, including the popular bottom of the well theory uh, associated with Test Zero. Um, can you shed any light on that? This is the first time any media has touched on this, so I'm pretty happy. <laughs> So, you know, we don't quite know, I don't know quite exactly, know exactly if it was a bug or something of like an Easter egg that was, you know, just kind of snuck in there from uh, people who worked on the, cre the original. But um, out of our team, there was nobody that actually worked on the original Test Zero. So I, we don't quite know like what the original intention of it is. Um, but um, I thought that, you know, people who, uh, you know, know the original would remember this. And so I definitely wanted to incorporate it into Rebirth. And, uh, but but then placing um, the character in the sort of the bottom of the well just right there is just a little bit weird. So then we designed this whole kind of like arena um, in, in the bottom um, to make it fit more within the worldview of uh, FF7. So, you know, for those who haven't played the original or might not know this character, might just think, huh, like weird character. But it's like, if you know, you know. And, uh, I'm so happy that you brought this up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's all Damiani, the master, the professional. Advent Children just re-released. And uh, there's, you know, the, one of the most epic moments is when uh, everyone comes together to, to fight together. Uh, did that inspire synergy attacks or where did synergy attacks um Come from. So in terms of the synergy attacks, um, that was coming from uh, when we were reviewing, um, you know, Najima-san's early draft of the script for Rebirth. Um, I saw that, you know, this story is going to be, you know, sort of, uh, you know, the, the uh, you know, centered and I'm very much focused on um, leading up to Earth's, um, you know, fate. Uh, and this is going to be very much vital and key to the story. Um, and along that, um, the sort of bonds uh, between the party members, between 
between Cloud um, and and his friends are going to be depicted in great detail. And um, you know that was something I, that I really noticed um, within the script. And so I felt that you know it was only natural to also reflect this in the sort of battle system and um, you know other gameplay elements as well. Yeah. But about you know Advent Children, um, there are kind of nudges to that where you know they're kind of banding together to fight together. So there's definitely some references that I hope people will pick up on. Uh, did you have a favorite uh, moment during the development, something you remember very fondly? Um, ah, we did so many things, uh, you know, and so it's bringing back tons of memories being asked these questions. Um, but, um, you know, especially a certain sort of moment where I definitely felt like, you know, very much excited and you know, kind of pumped up at the feeling of, of creating this game was, um, you know, mo- sort of most of our uh, Final Fantasy series uh, titles are um, tend to be a, a bit more like, you know, story driven and uh, perhaps also kind of located within, um, you know, a limited area. Um, uh, but this time, you know, since the world is expanding, we have the world map now, um, sort of a, a core a challenge for us was uh, considering, you know, what is sort of, you know, realistic for us um, to be able to create within the dev team um, but also be able to include, um, you know, kind of uh, the contents and sort of depth that uh, allows for this, you know, fun, uh, you know, element of play to be felt within the users. And so, um, you know, we were very much sort of determined to pursue this um, and, uh, you know, from the very beginning. And within the first year, we had kind of like a very much like really basic um, sort of map, that like a world map of this um, the, that served as the basis where, you know, we could actually control and, and move around and explore. And so when I, I was playing this and exploring um, just the initial like basic world map that we had kind of started, um, I really had that feeling of like, you know, I think this is really going to be something exciting and and really great and um, that was when uh, I felt really very much excited for this any things you learned from remake part one that was carried over into rebirth or uh, intermission as well so of course, you know, Final Fantasy VII is a title in which there's just so many, you know, existing fans. So you know, for remake, of course, you know, there was this, you know, big consideration of like, you know, how do we, you know, reconstruct and remake something um, like this um, that's so, you know, beloved throughout all these years. And so there's there was of course kind of like a large sort of trial and error like aspect to releasing something like that. Um, but now, kind of you know, having experienced that, and um, you know, also having this this experience and knowledge, wealth of knowledge of having worked on this piece, um, releasing it and receiving, you know, the, the feedback um, from the players, um, we feel, you know, being really confident and, and able to kind of um, implement this and work work with that um, for Rebirth. And so, you know, we feel uh, that we were able to create something um, you know, very great. And I think this experience and knowledge is only going to like further propel us, you know, into the the next, the the third title as well. And, and, you know, continuing to sort of leverage this and growing uh, into into an even greater piece of work. So I'm really excited uh, for players to see this. Same, (laughs) for sure. Thank you so much for coming down all the way here to uh, talk about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. (laughs) I'm excited for everyone out there to play Final Fantasy Rebirth. So thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you so much.